Hey, good morning, everyone. Got your coffee? I run on coffee and grace. I've got so many awesome cups I get to take turns with every morning that remind me of our good Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, well, welcome. We are, I think, preparing for a little snowstorm here. I don't think we're supposed to get a lot of snow, but the winds are supposed to be pick, picking up to about 50 miles an hour. And so um, I am, <coughs> excuse me, up and running. Yesterday was kind of a, a down day, um, but um, doing better and Hopefully going to be able to get a lot of stuff done before the weather comes in. So we have a lot of acts of kindness and a lot of um, um, prayers today. So we better get rolling. Um, hang on one second, though. <coughs> it is so dry in our house. And I just don't get why it is so dry. I've got a humidifier right in the bedroom, right next to my bed. And it says it's like 47% humidity. There's just no reason, but it's so dry in our house. Okay, anyway, so let's start out with prayers. First of all, I would like to rest, request prayers for my cousin in Sweden, Karina. She's just been diagnosed with muscular rheumatism. She's my age. Um, and it, it just kind of limits her movement and stuff like that. But you know what? She's a trooper and she's, she's going to get through this. So please pray for my cousin. I call her my sister, Karina. Um, prayers continue to go out for Carolyn. Um, the holidays have been just a, a little bit of a struggle for her. Um, but I tried to remind her the real reason of the season. There is nothing on this earth that should bring us down this time of the year or any day out of the year um, because um, Jesus Christ is born. And um, also, um, I always try to remind people when stuff gets them down. It's kind of hard and what maybe a little out there, but, you know, we can't take anything with us um, on this earth. We can't take family. We can't take friends. We can't take material things. And so we need to be living each and every day um, for eternal salvation with our room especially prepared for us in God's mansion. Um, hard, hard to do, I know, as humans, but keep it running. Keep it running here. Okay, um, so my friend Gina's nephew, um, Grayson, needs some prayers along with his family um, as he's been diagnosed with leukemia. Um, I think he's in between 8 and 12. I can't remember how old he is, but oh my goodness, please pray for Grace and that family and the medical staff. Prayers go out for Maureen Setness. I just got word last night that Maureen is returning from St. Cloud Hospital to her home in Park River, um, but is going to be placed on hospice. So I'm actually going to try to get there today to see her. Um, so please pray for Maureen and her family. Uh, my friend Debbie requests prayers for her brother-in-law as he um, is in the hospital with some health concerns. Please keep him in your prayers. Uh, we prayed for an old high school friend of mine, Jim Codwell. Um, he went in for surgery yesterday and I can't remember exactly what happened, but um, anyway, when they were prepping for surgery, his blood pressure and everything really dropped. Um, and so they pulled him out of it and we're going to do a bunch of tests and going to try to do the bypass surgery today. So please keep Jim, his wife, Chris, and the medical staff and just everybody in your prayers. Um, Jim is my age, so young guy. Um, prayers for Bonnie Deegan. Um, she's a friend of, of ours and and shares her God-given gifts and talents by playing the keyboard with our violinist, Marcy Gross. Um, and if you remember, we prayed for Bonnie. She was diagnosed with an illness, and she just really needs our prayers. Um, again, please keep Mary and Larry uh, legacy in your prayers as Larry continues treatment. And also Kathy and Daryl. 
um, as as uh, Daryl continues treatment. And, you know, this time of the year, oh, darn it, it's just so hard. We want to be, you know, joyful, happy, and everything. And some of this stuff can really bring you down. So please pray for them. So we have tons of acts of kindness, tons. You ready? Here we go. Amber, my friend Amber uh, from Langdon there, um, shared that some friends gave her a work shirt of a lost loved one, and then her grandma made it into a pillow for her. How beautiful, how awesome. And it's a work shirt that has his name right here, and then the name of the company, you know, the patches, like those kind of button-down work shirts. And so I seen a picture of the pillow. It was absolutely awesome. Um, the Hoyles family shared on Facebook that their church believes that nobody should have to celebrate Christmas alone. And so they are having a Christmas Eve um, supper and they are inviting everybody to attend. How wonderful. Oh, I wish we did something like that out here. We might have to try that in the future. Um, so last Sunday, <clears throat> I went caroling with the kids. And... Oh my gosh, if you want to talk about love, because that um, the theme for last uh, Advent Sunday was love. And what better love can you find in children? And so we did, I think we had about 15 kids at church, and um, uh, it went wonderful. The, uh, the service went, they did such an amazing job. Well, then the flu started hitting our kids, and they started dropping like flies. And so then we went to Edmar Restaurant, and I think we had about eight there, and then eight or nine maybe, and then we went to Osterbrock, and we ended up with four. And so um, that's why I, you know, became a little under the weather. So anyway, um, on, on Tuesday, uh, so anyway, um, I just have to tell you that do you guys remember, I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to the nursing home in New London, the Glen Oaks nursing home. And, you know, we'd be kind of scared of the residents, right? You know, they looked different than us when we were kids. But I have to tell you, these kids showed so much love and care and concern. Um, we have one resident at the Edmore Rest Home um, that has uh, dementia, Alzheimer's. And pretty much just kind of sits in his chair, sleeps a lot. And one of our boys went over there and kind of tried to wake him up to open his presents. And, and actually, he didn't wake up. But then he went back there, and he just wanted to tell him goodbye. And he woke up right at that time. And so he stayed to watch him over uh, open his presents. And this one little boy was right there with him. And he was all smiles. It just warmed my heart. And then we went to the other nursing home. And we have a resident there that's just an awesome man. He's actually a member of my church here. Um, and he's blind. And so um, we had two little boys that sat with him and helped him open his presence and talked with him. Um, they were just so caring. And, you know, I have to tell you, the four kids, and then, of course, I stood up there. And then the sister of another one, you know, stood up front. So we had six people up there. And then the residents sang along. But those four kids sang out like you would not believe. It was just amazing. I was so proud of them. Um, and then at both places, we, we got the chance to watch the the um, residents open up their presents from, you know, the two anonymous donors. And this one at Edmar, she loves Elvis, right? So when I was ordering presents, I'm like, what can I get that's different? So I found this Elvis clock. You know, it's just a round clock, and it's got Elvis, you know, singing and stuff. And, and uh, anyway, she opened it, and you heard a scream from Edmore to Langdon. She was so excited. Oh, my goodness, you guys, it warmed my heart. So God bless the parents and all the kids that participated in our Christmas caroling. Um, so I seen on Facebook in my... my uh, my home county, Candy High County, Minnesota. Um, um, anyway, okay, you guys, it says the current keyframe rate is too low. Recommended keyframe rates are in the range of one every two to four seconds. Please update or viewers may experience a lower quality stream. I do not know what that means, and I don't dare to click on it in case I lose you, so bear with me. Um, 
Anyway, in Candia High County, a car went in the ditch. <clears throat> and by the time the officers showed up, Santa was there helping the people in the ditch. You don't often see that, do you? Um, so God bless the Santa there that was helping out. Um, my husband, Darren. And Tom Bredesen um, pulled a car out of the ditch not too far from our house yesterday, so God bless them. Um, I seen on our news Rydell's in, I can't, I don't know if it was Grand Forks or Fargo, but they gave away 15 used cars that had been completely gone over, look like brand new cars, to victims of domestic abuse. So 15 women received um um, new cars. Um, God bless you guys. God bless you guys. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. My friend Wanda wanted to put a thank you out to Jeff Horn, who paid for their lunch the other day. Um, so Jenny O turkeys, if you guys have ever heard of it. So, uh, in Wilmer, Minnesota, which is right by my hometown, that's kind of the, the heart of Jenny O turkeys. And anyway, Genio always gives bonuses to their employees based on their performance and um, their net um, profit or whatever. And anyway, this year, and it's the 18th year that they've done it. This year, each employee ended up with a thousand, uh, right around a thousand dollars per employee. God bless you guys. Look at this sharing, you guys. Um, Camp Ripley. Okay, that's up in uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul area. They had a program that was called Wreaths for the Fallen. And um, they placed on Sunday, I believe it was, 5,500 wreaths placed on fallen soldiers' graves. Can you imagine the volunteers that that took and the donations? God bless you guys. Uh, my friend shared that Redeemer Lutheran in Wilmer delivered Christmas boxes of food to people in the community, and mainly her mom. And her mom was super surprised and super happy. So God bless them. Um, let's see. Oh, so I was um, I was in Levers. And I'll try to do a long story short. Uh, I started a conversation with a gentleman. And um, he was, you know, talking about the prices of groceries and stuff like that. And, and then he shared with me that, you know, their house and their farm and everything burned down a year ago, January. And, you know, it just seemed like he was kind of struggling this time of year. And so anyway, um, this is God working. So I'm in a um, checkout line here. He's in the next one over. And his checkout line, the card reader froze. So I told uh, Barb at the grocery store, I said, hurry up, run this gift card through. And so she ran it through real quick and I paid for it. And then while the guy was waiting in the other line, I, I went around and handed him the gift card. And I just said, Merry Christmas. Um, I hope you remember the true reason of the season. And I hope this helps, you know, maybe with your Christmas dinner or whatever. And just as I gave him the card, the, the uh, card reader started working. So much fun, you guys. So much fun. Um, also, uh, Darren and I donated um, goodie trays to um, a couple of the Farmers Union employees that go above and beyond when they come out to our house. Couple more, guys. So I heard this from, from a friend, but there's a dealership in Owatonna, Minnesota, that gives their employees um, a bonus check every year, okay, um, of $1,000. And not only that, you guys, they give them a separate check for $1,000 to be donated to a charity of their choice in their name, in the employee's name, not the dealership's name. Boy. You want to talk about spreading acts of kindness there. Praise the Lord and God bless you. And then um, um, Barb shared with me that she wanted to thank her neighbors when the power went out um, because her neighbors offered them um, a place to go when their power was out to keep them warm and 
fed them and just had some some great time together so lots of acts of kindness going on nowadays guys let's keep them rolling oh wait one more one more one more a 12 year old boy listen to this a 12 year old boy sold over fifty-six thousand dollars in the Boy Scout popcorn and chocolate covered pretzels, and they get a percentage of that as their way, you know, uh, of thanks or whatever. So with this, the twelve-year-old little boy paid it forward by going shopping at Walmart, Fleet Farm, um, different places. So here's what he did when he was done shopping. He had spent $11,300. And with that, he bought gifts for the domestic, the local domestic abuse center. And for all the foster kids in four counties and part of a fifth. Because you see, his dad was in a foster home. And from what he heard, it just wasn't very, very great. And so this year with that $11,300, it was over 600 presents. And his goal for next year is to raise enough money for every foster child in Minnesota. Where are these kids coming from? The good Lord, children of God, disciples of God, just like our um, our um, most dead boy here in town. Um, you know, he's I think he's 12. Praise the Lord. Um, and praise the Lord for the parents that support these kids. That mom was saying, um, you know, they had raised like 30,000 and she's like, you know, isn't this enough? Because he used to set up, you know, at Fleet Farm and stuff like that. And it was cold. Isn't this enough? Can we stop now? And the little boy was like, no, mom, no. No, we can't stop yet. We got to keep going. God bless, God bless, God bless. That just warms my heart, right? Um, okay, so I got to plug my phone in here. Okay. Okay, so with that... Let us uh, pray. Hang on, I want to find a nice one here. Okay, let's do this one. All right, let us pray. Dear Lord, your name is still called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. As your children, we cry out for a fresh feeling and a new awareness of who you are. We choose by faith to make the good news of great joy a reality in our own lives so others can see us as lighted trees of life pointing to you this Christmas season. We know one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And we also know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. You are still our joy. You are still our peace. You are no longer a babe in the manger. You are Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we still celebrate you as Lord this Christmas season and always. Amen. Okay, my friends. So... We're going to just briefly touch on the Christ candle, real briefly. And then have another little message for you. So, um, so wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I do here? Papers, papers, papers. Here we go. Okay, so over our past um, messages, we've talked about Advent and the Advent candles and their meaning. On, you know that Sunday mornings um, and so we talk for example the first advent candle represented hope um, and um, we looked at hope in light of Christmas and the Christmas story second candle was peace so the second Sunday we looked at peace and how it relates to Christmas 
And then we did the same for the third and fourth Advent candles, which represented joy and love. But you may notice there's one candle left on the wreath, right in the middle, right? It's called the Christ candle. The Christ candle is saved for the last and lit on either Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. And so this being Christmas Eve, um, which we will light ours on, um, we will light all four outside candles as well as the center candle in celebration of Christmas. Now the Christ candle is in the center because the Christ candle reminds us that Jesus is the center of Christmas. The four outer candles are all still very important, but they only make sense with Jesus at the center, right? So we know Christmas is a time of hope, peace, joy, and love, but once again, this is only because of Jesus. And so this Christmas, I want us to take a look and be aware and remember that Jesus is at the center of Christmas and how we only have real hope, peace, joy, and love in our lives because of him. And it's the same, or um, it, we must, where am I at? Okay, we must remember this. We all want hope, peace, joy, and love, but some people seem to want them without Jesus, right? It's like this. It's like wanting the light, the warmth, the scent, and crackling of the fire in the fireplace with no fire burning, without a fire in it. It doesn't work that way. Just as the fire is the central to all the good things about a fire, so Christ is the central of Christmas. Hope, peace, joy, and love come from him. He is the center, and we only enjoy the good things of Christmas because of him. And so, as you watch a Christ candle burning on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day service, centered around all the, or in the middle of all the other candles, remember that Christ is central. He is the reason for Christmas. He is the one who truly brings the hope, peace, joy, and love to us all. And so let us draw near to him to worship, to praise, to follow and believe. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. He is Christ the Lord. So there, my friends, is the Christ candle. But I wanted to jump in um, to a little bit about the Christmas story because this is going to be our last Coffee with Christ before Christmas. So let's read Luke 2, verses 1 through 21. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Curin Curin Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on peace or on earth, peace to those who, whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed 
at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. How beautiful is that? I have to let my dog in, maybe. <clears throat> Come on. It's cold out, but he is in and out and in and out and in and out. So, anyway, let's take a look at the Christmas story and, and pull out some things that, that we can learn from that in our everyday lives. Um, so, the first one that I love, because you guys know me, is... Even Jesus wasn't above simple, simple circumstances, okay? So when you think of kings, what do you think of? You think of crowns and thrones and palaces. and um, You don't think of stables full of smelly farm animals and a feeding trough as a bed for a newborn baby king, right? Yet Jesus, king of kings, though he is came into the world in a remarkably simple, lowly, and unassuming way. His birth was the first, furthest thing from a king's welcome. Now, few of us are acquainted with the ways of royalty, and it's hard to even fathom how elaborate and exquisite that lifestyle is unless we see it on TV. But many more of us, however, can destroy Describe in detail what a barn is like. I find this part of the Christmas story so beautiful. Jesus didn't come to earth as a mighty, majestic king who would be intimidating and untouchable. He instead came as an innocent, needy, dependent baby born to parents who were poor and as simply normal as could be. Everything about the very beginnings of his life on earth was humble and unassuming. Giving us a savior we can easily relate to and understand. Not one who is distant or on a lofty throne. This is such a comforting truth, my friends. And we don't have to have um, prestigious job titles or well-stocked bank accounts or fame to be used by God. Because not even his son required those things. Know that. Know that. Next, God's glory is worthy of our praise even when we feel afraid. Hang on here a second. Okay, so right now I have the German Shepherd playing with the cat and I'm just not sure who's winning. I just wanted to be sure. <laughs> okay, God's glory is worthy of our praise even when we feel afraid. Let's think about when the angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds who were keeping watch over their sheep just a regular night at work, right? What does it say? It says, when the angels came to give them the good news, they were terrified. I think I would be too. <laughs> Even though they were afraid and probably trying to make sense of what they were seeing and hearing, wondering if they were dreaming or if this really was happening, the angel's first word, words to them were, do not be afraid. Let's keep that in mind. Do not be afraid. Next, when the Lord makes a promise, we can trust him to keep it. Maybe not on our time, maybe not our way, but his promise is going to be his way and on his time. The shepherds heard from the angels that the baby had been born. They didn't for one second doubt it. Verse 15 tells us when the angels had left, wait, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. They heard the message and what did they do? They immediately acted upon it, never hesitating or questioning that what the angel of the Lord had said to them. We should do the same with our lives. We have scripture 
as tangible documentation of the Lord's promises and truth. And we should act on them without questioning his faithfulness and trustworthiness. The Bible, my favorite. Four, words from and about the Lord are to be treasured. So when the shepherds visited Mary and Joseph, I love this because we don't pay attention to this part that much. Uh, when, uh, when the shepherds visited Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger, uh, we hear in the Christmas story, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. I don't know about you, but I can't even imagine what the shepherds were running around telling everybody. Their stories and, and what, they, what their stories must have been after seeing the angels and all the glory of the Lord out in the fields. But I know it must have been powerful and beautiful. And I like this part right here. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 51 later says, His mother treasured all these things in her heart. After Jesus was found in the temple learning from the teachers, that was way later. That was way later. She's still treasuring all these things in her heart. The things Mary had heard about her son and the things she saw him doing were beautiful treasures to her. And they should be for us as well. The stories we have in scripture tell us about who Jesus is and what he did on earth. And we should hold them always near and dear to our hearts. <clears throat> last and I think that this is really important this goes two ways okay we should make time to learn from them older than us and you folks that are older than us please take the time to share with those that are younger than you so Jesus did this as a child in the temple if you remember painting a beautiful picture for us Jesus was the all-knowing and all-powerful Son of God, yet even he sat among the temple's teachers to listen, ask questions, and learn. Verse 47 says, Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. And then verse 52 later says, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. He knew as a boy that his elders had wisdom that he could grow from, and he sought it out. And we should do the same, and vice versa for you older, wiser folks. Uh, we should seek the advice and knowledge of those who are mature and knowledgeable in their faith. And as I said, please share that back with us. Because we can learn so much from mentors, teachers, and pastors when we listen to their words, ask them questions, and just spend time among them. <coughs> When we hear Luke 2 this Christmas Eve, which most of us will, let's remember some of these things that we talked about today and look deeper beyond just hearing the familiar story of Christmas and see that these verses are practically relevant for us even thousands of years later each and every day. Merry Christmas to you all and God's blessings. You're all so very important to me. Well, we wrap that up, guys. Say a prayer for me as I head out today. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. Get some visiting done and stuff like that. Um, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Please try to make it to your Christmas Eve service. You know, even if you're not a regular church goer, <clears throat> I promise you that if you go to Christmas Eve service, it will bring so much peace to you. And hopefully you'll carry that into the, the next year, each and every day. So with that, um, let us all join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those of you around our area, just to let you know, um, Nicoma Lutheran will have church at um, 2 o'clock. And then Lawton and Fairdale will have their Christmas Eve service at 345. And then Adams and Edmore, Concordia Lutheran, will have theirs at 530. And everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. So my friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. And remember that today is a gift. And that's why we call it the present. So make the most of this beautiful day because this is the day that the Lord has made and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm praying for all of you for safe travels over the holiday season and please take this time to remember the real reason of the season with your family and friends. God bless and amen. So until next week, bye for now.